Welcome everyone. Um, today's uh, video is about art installations, about what it means to install an installation, to propose an installation. And of course, this is a, a talk that was uh, suggested by one of the members and the questions that are, that are sometimes asked more often about how do I propose a solo show to a gallery or an installation to a gallery. And I want to go over a number of those issues today and what that means. Um, for those of you who are on this live, um, you can you can ask me questions and I'll get to them at the end of this uh, video. And if you're not watching this live um, and you're a member of, of the group here, then you can always uh, ask questions on this thread, you know, and, I, and I'll post other resources there as well. So again, welcome everyone. I want to thank you all for being part of this tribe. You know, it's such an active group. Uh, here at Praxis Center, we see so many people talking to each other and posting amazing art and talking about all the things that are happening. So, as always, I'm really excited to be um, to be working with you guys and to see this 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 tribe of of artists. So, um, I'm so excited and engaged. You know, it's great to see. I I, I love this. I love what I'm doing. So, um, and I love what you're doing. I love seeing all this art. I love seeing people, uh, you know, break through barriers and get to places they didn't think they would be. So let's talk about installations. Now, first there, like, what is an installation, right? There's, there's an immersive installation, and then there's uh, another, another term of it, which is just hanging a show. So when you say, I want to put an installation into a gallery, a solo installation, um, you could be talking about, one of two things. Either you're going to make, uh, you have an idea for a solo show, and there are a number of pieces hung on the wall or sculptures or videos, whatever it is, but they're individual works of art that are hung on the wall. Or you're talking about an installation where it's something immersive, where the whole room, the whole show is, is one artwork in a sense, and it could combine multiple elements. This is this is obviously a medium that most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with. The idea of creating an immersive installation, where um, there are often interactive elements, or or it's a, it's bringing you into a kind of a world like this sort of Yoyoi Kusama's Infinite Mirror experience, right? An installation, or um, or, or something else where there's uh, where what you're standing on and looking at, and the whole room is an installation. So to begin with, right? There's two types of installations. There's immersive that are like one unified artwork in an entire gallery. That's a solo show. And then there's another type of installation, which is you hanging a show, you proposing a show that you want to, to hang, let's say 20 paintings or 20 photographs or a combination of paintings, photographs, or videos and sculptures, whatever it is. So, um, so there's, there's two places, of course, to also propose installations, whether they're immersive or you're hanging individual uh, art. And those two places are nonprofit galleries and commercial galleries, right? There, there, there could be other, other possibilities, but just let's stick to those for now. I mean, there may be openings at museums and, and, um, and perhaps you're collaborating with friends to do a pop-up show, which I'll talk about a little bit at the end. But essentially your choice is either galleries or nonprofit spaces. Now, nonprofit spaces, as I've talked about before, are enormously important to an artist's career. They're important because nonprofit spaces are educational spaces. Museums are nonprofit spaces, essentially. Uh, their goal isn't to sell artwork. Um, alternative spaces, nonprofit spaces, they're not there to sell artwork. They're there to educate the public. So often you see things there, like installations that are immersive, that, that are not designed to be sold, are not designed to be part of the market. And so there are opportunities at nonprofits that there wouldn't be at a gallery because a gallery has to pay its rent by selling work and they have to sell it at a regular basis and the more the better, right? They're, they're trying to make money selling art. So often, you know, immersive installations at galleries, while they do happen, are not, um, are not common because the gallery usually can't make anything off of that. Um, the galleries, the major galleries in New York that often have immersive installations are, um, are doing so because they're promoting the work of an artist that they have lots of individual works for in the back room. So an installation generates a lot of attention for the artist and then they can sell derivative works or other works that, that they have in the back room. 
So an, inst an immersive installation isn't what would want to be your, your first proposal to a gallery in most cases because they want to know what they can sell of yours. So I'm going to talk about proposing an installation, immersive, and uh, uh, you know a straight hanging installation of your work, a solo show, to a nonprofit and a gallery today. So submission procedures to begin with, right? Um, galleries have uh, often certain procedures to submit. Some galleries are open to proposals, others not. Most galleries want um, you to be in a, in, a, in a group show first, right? This is a typical format for how galleries like to build a relationship with you. If they're looking at new work and you're showing them new work, you're going to their openings, you're building a relationship, they want to show one of your pieces, typically in a group show. And the reason for that is they want to see, do other people talk about your work? Is it pointed out at all? What's it like to work with you? Was it okay to, for them to work with you just to get one piece for a group show? Because starting off with a solo show, unless you're a really well-known artist, um, you're an unknown quantity. They don't know whether you're easy to deal with or not. They don't know whether the work will be liked or not. So it's less risk for a gallery to have one piece in a solo show. And um, it's also practically makes more sense for them because um, in a solo show, in, 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 I mean, in a group show, to have one piece in a group show, because then they can kind of test the waters with seeing what you're like and how you are and, and how people react to the art. However, there may be instances where you have a friend that has a gallery or a gallery is, is, is asking, you know, something about, have you ever thought about a solo show? And um, you can propose a solo show to them. So it's the same as with a, um, a nonprofit space. A nonprofit space will have a call uh, out. There's, a, there's definitely procedures in nonprofit spaces to, to have a, a proposal submitted. And sometimes they say something specific, like give us a proposal for a solo show or a two-person show, whatever it is. So in your proposal, um, what I would suggest is whether it's for a gallery or a nonprofit space, you know, and maybe you are feeling really bold and you want to, you've talked to the gallery owner a few times and you think I'm just going to give them a proposal for an immersive installation or a full show of my work. You know, again, the, the, the nonprofit space is one that's typically more open to that. But it's the same process in terms of proposing it. The nonprofit space will have guidelines that are specific about what to submit to them for proposing it. Uh, a gallery will wanna know what's in it for them, what's for sale here, and you know, like what's, what's, what's gonna make them money off of this. So, um, so in either case, the way you make a proposal is of course, you have your idea, right? Whether it's, again, something immersive, or something um, that's about individual works being hung. And what I would suggest is you make a proposal that's very easy to understand without too much writing. So the first page, which is a synopsis of the proposal, is maybe half a page of writing or less, not much. Like, what is it? You walk into a room, there's two mirrors, there's lights in between, there's, it looks like you're in, a, in an infinite space. I mean, that's clear, right? Maybe you all know that installation. But still, it's easy to describe, and we know what's happening. Viewers are stepping into a space that seems to have an infinite amount of space within it because of the way musician, you know, the, the mirrors are positioned. However, even in, even in a proposal like that, what you want to show is a sketch or a Photoshop, however you want to do it, of exactly how it will look in that space. Even if you have to draw the mirrors and, and, and kind of do it in a rough way, um, it's ideal to have photographs of the space, photographs of the nonprofit space or the gallery, and you, um, you know, draw your installation on top of those images. It's really a very exciting way to do a proposal because whether you're uh, showing this to a commercial gallery or a nonprofit space, what they both have in common is they love their space, right? Gallerists love their space. Nonprofit spaces love their space. So when they see you take photographs of their space, you know, walk in anytime and take a photograph with art on the wall. You can just remove it with Photoshop or whatever means you want to use. But when they see you use their space, you have photographs of their space and you have, you know, put a show into it, it's very exciting for them. Whether they want to take on that show or not is, is up to, you know, the, 
how, however they're deciding that at the nonprofit space in the gallery, but to, to, to do something with effort that shows their space and how work is going to look in it is super exciting. It's great to see. I mean, imagine you had a gallery and an artist comes to you with something that's nearly fully rendered of, of what the work will look like, how it will hang on the wall, how far apart, or if it's immersive, where all the elements are going. It's exciting to look at whether you decide to give that artist a show or not. So that's the way to give a proposal. Um, I would say just a few pieces of paper, one that's less than half a page of text, briefly describing the viewer's experience in the show, and then at least a page or two of images, of photographed images of the gallery or nonprofit space, and, um, and show exactly what it would look like to have your work in there. You don't have to be too detailed. You can draw frames on the walls and, 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 and just say, you know, art here, art here. You can get as detailed as you want, but get a sense of what's happening. So, okay. I'm gonna answer more of your questions at the end of this. And I wanna just welcome all the people that are here live, Sasha, Steve, Leslie, Kathleen, Michael, Chadwick, Trudana. Um, great to have you all here. And others that I, I think are here but are, are not popping up right now. So welcome all you members that are, that are here now. Um, so again, we're talking about proposals to galleries and nonprofits of solo shows, installations is what we're calling them, right? An installation is either, again, something immersive, um, where every element in the show comes together, like video projections and sculptures that all fit together and are not sold separately, or what's also called an installation, an installation of works. Could be 20 paintings on the wall. In either case, just to reiterate, what I was suggesting is small page of text and two pages of detailed photos that show exactly what it'll look like in the space. Okay, so the next process is, you know, how do you approach a gallery or how do you approach uh, a nonprofit space? Well, for a nonprofit space, there's simply submission guidelines. It's, it's, they don't have the flexibility of a gallery because they're, they're a nonprofit, which means they're, they're, um, have tax deductions and, and, and they have a, a board and their, their decisions are made by committee. So in almost all cases, you have to go with whatever their guidelines are. There's certain times of year that they're looking for proposals and, and, and give them a proposal that way. For galleries, it's quite a bit different. For galleries, they're, they're looking to make money. They have to make money. So if you're proposing a solo show and they've never worked with you before, to begin with, it's, it's unlikely that that'll happen unless there's some very exciting element to it that makes it clear to them they're gonna sell a lot of work because it's much, it's, it's a big risk they're taking, right? They have to pay rent and, and, and maybe installation fees for, for everything you're doing. So, um, so with a gallery, typically, the first step is you have one piece in a group show and then that may lead to a solo show if they like working with you and you like working with them and someone showed interest in your work, or ideally several people showed interest in the, the one or two pieces in a group show. However, if you feel that you have a great idea for a, a gallery, a solo show, an installation, I would encourage you to propose it. It's again, a, high, a, a higher likelihood of them not getting accepted because there's too much risk to take. But it depends how you do the proposal. So for example, if you were to say, um, I'm doing a proposal at this uh, uh, at your gallery, and, and these are the images I've created, and I've created a whole plan for what would happen during this this exhibition. And again, this is a commercial gallery, right? Regular gallery, not a nonprofit. And you say to them, "Okay, I'm going to hang 20 works, or I'm going to do this immersive installation. It'll look exactly like this." The reason this show will work is because I have a mailing list, or my job has a mailing list of 10,000 people, and I can pack this opening. I know I can pack this opening, and I know I can pack it with people who are interested buyers. Um, I also know that I'm going to bring some other events to the opening. I'm gonna have a musician there. I'm also gonna um, you know, have a poetry reading. I'm not saying to do all this, but here's a proposal that it's hard to say no to, right? So if you tell the gallery, I'd like to take over your space for two weeks, do a solo show, I'm gonna bring in a packed crowd, I'm gonna have a musician and a poet, they're gonna bring in a lot of people, it'll be a huge event, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna generate sales, but you're definitely gonna get publicity because I'm gonna send out press releases, and there's gonna be a big crowd here. 
a little more likely they may say yes, right? It's kind of a proposal that's hard to refuse. If you're telling them, look, I'm going to drive a crowd here. You know, it's, 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 how, it's how it works often. You know, for, for a while, I had this, uh, my, my son had a uh, piano teacher and, and she told me, she said, Brainerd, you look like, you know, you, you know how to work things in the art world. Can you book me? Can you help me get book gigs for my band at different, you know, venues in New York City? And I said, well, you know, that's interesting. This was, this was a few years ago. And I said, yeah, let me, let me try. Um, and so what I did was, and she paid me for this service, but what I, which is not something I typically do, but she was really insistent that I try it. And so what I found out was the way as, as a new band, or even a kind of somewhat known band, unless you're very famous, what they want from bands is, they need a guarantee that there's going to be, you know, 50 people coming in. Otherwise, you know, they're definitely not going to give you a Friday, Saturday night. They're going to give you a Monday or Tuesday night. And they want to see first on a Monday or Tuesday night, are you going to bring a crowd? Are you going to bring 50 people that buy drinks at the bar because the admission is free or the admission's five bucks? That's how it works. You drive a crowd. It doesn't really matter what the band sounds like. You're in. So, Galleries are, of course, not the same thing as, as bars and venues looking to book musicians, but they're also not so different in that they're trying to make money, they have to sell work, and if you're going to propose a whole solo, solo event, it better sound pretty exciting, and you have to be sure you're driving a crowd there. Otherwise, typically, you start out with one piece in a group show. And, and also, this is, of course, also possible if you're doing something like... Um, uh, doing an installation with it with a nonprofit space that's more likely to take to take place and there'll be there'll be um, ways that you can propose to them that they'll have guidelines for okay so last on this topic and then I'm going to answer your questions if you have any is um, an alternate to both of these things so let's say you have an installation you have an idea but you know the nonprofits near you um, don't have any openings soon. Uh, the galleries, you're not comfortable with doing this, and you have a burning desire to make this installation happen. This is something that many artists experience, right? And it's, it's, it's historical, traditional. Artists have shows they want to mount. They don't want to wait for a gallery or a nonprofit to accept them into the show. So the way to do it is to create your own alternative space. That's a pop-up space. That's what happened... Um, you know, in, in, in London years ago with a whole YBA with Damien Hurst and a whole bunch of graduates that were completely unknown, rented a warehouse space uh, that was big, but it was cheap. And it was a lot of them. And they all created things that were like installations, giant independent shows. And then they all worked like crazy to get some publicity. Who did they know? Who could they contact? That's one way. It was very successful for them, and it's a model that still succeeds. If you can bring a bunch of artists together, rent a space, split the cost, not renting from a gallery, renting from a realtor somewhere who wants to transform an unused space into something that will make a little money for a month. Let's say it costs $1,000 to rent it for a month or, or two weeks. If it's split among several artists, you know, that can, that can work. This is, you know, an outer kind of um, method of doing it. But um, if, if you're not going to do the nonprofit or the gallery, using a pop-up space uh, that's, that you can rent by the month or the week is one way to do it. And then, of course, drive publicity, drive people there it, by sending out press releases, by using social media, any other way you can. However, when doing something like that, it's, it's, it's a big burden on you, right? You have to drive this whole crowd now to this alternative pop-up space you've created. A better way to do it is to collaborate with several other artists, like the YBA artists, as they're now called, did um, in London. Because when you have five artists, if the space is big enough, if you have five artists or ten enough, and you, ten artists, and you can all mount your installation in there, which is images or immersive situations, now you have 10 people trying to drive a crowd and 10 people will drive a bigger crowd even if they're just inviting their friends right but if they're all trying to kind of work any contacts they have with the press chances are even greater that it'll work so um i'm going to answer your questions but i wanted to say members i'm here to support you in this process 
I'm here to support you in what you're 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 doing in terms of how you're you're building your shows and, and working with galleries and nonprofit spaces. I know all of you have seen everybody else that's having all this success in these groups and everybody's at different levels. So um, I just want to again thank you guys for being in this tribe that's so supportive of each other. As I see you all commenting on each other's posts and each other's success. And also, of course, I'm here for all of you members in this tribe, on this thread, as well as um, in the group where this live video is happening. So let's see, any any questions? Um, so uh, you're welcome, Steve and, um, and Renee. Uh, great to see you here too, and great to see you yesterday. Leslie says, I always photograph spaces where work is going to be shown, so I have a sense of scale lighting is what's going on. I appreciate the info about sketching it all out. All this is creates a more professional presentation. That's right. It creates a more professional presentation, and, and, and as well as it being professional, it also is a, um, it's complementary to the person who has the space. Uh, I've done this several times myself in museums and other places, and when they see their space carefully um, kind of uh, used to create a mock-up, it's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, there was a museum show I did several years ago where I even worked with architecture students and had a whole fly-through made of the space, which was wowing to them, you know? I mean, there were several stages to that, but, but yes, very professional way to do it. Looks great, and people love it. Um, Kathleen, how to propose a solo show at a small local museum? Is it the same as the nonprofit? Kathleen, good question. Um, a small local museum? Yes, um, but a little bit different because they may not have an open call. So what you want to look at in a small local museum is one, where would your show be? Often a small local museum has shows planned months in advance, years in advance. So what you want to find out is what space in that local museum is flexible. Where have contemporary artists shown in that local museum before where, um, where you know, you could show. You could also look at a place in that local museum that hasn't had exhibits before. You know, there's a famous... Um, a story about James Lee Byers, a wonderful late artist who would go to MoMA and say, I need to speak to the curator, you know, of such and such. The curator would come down, she'd say, what is it? And he'd say, yeah, I really want to have a show here. And how do I go about it? And she'd say, you know, we, we, we don't go about shows like that. We don't take proposals and we don't work with usually living artists. And he kept pursuing it, writing her letters, pursuing it, pursuing it. I just need to have a show somewhere in the Museum of Modern Art. Eventually, he showed in their emergency stairwell. Sounds crazy, right? It's a kind of a legendary show now that he did, and uh, partly because there was a recent show at MoMA of all the letters he sent the curator. And so, you know, um, and he sent him handmade letters that were beautiful. You know, he was driven to get into that museum, and that was MoMA. So your local small museum, similar tactics apply. I'm not saying to show in the emergency stairwell, but I'm saying you could... Um, look at spaces in there that are uh, that are not used that they may not even be thinking of you know projections on the outside wall or just whatever the space is that's flexible that would that would be the way to propose to them and then find out who curates that space then call the museum I mean, call them up or write to them if you want but I would call them and speak to that curator and say can I meet you for for lunch or coffee in in the cafe of the museum I just want to run a, a proposal by you they're usually open to that. And if you're asking them for coffee right there in the museum, they'll, they'll usually say yes. That's what I've used to great effect. Um, okay, so, uh, Morella, yeah, glad you like it. I see a lot more people are on now. Um, Kip Walker said, yeah. Kip is saying we had six artists doing the installation that included performance artists two evenings. Right, when there's, when there's performances happening and different ideas going on, it, you know, it draws a bigger crowd, especially for alternative gatherings. Uh, Gregory, what would you recommend doing a pop-up show that is not in your hometown, like being in a bigger city? Um, I definitely do that. That's great. I, there's, there's an artist I knew that, that there's a few ways of doing it. You know, some people travel around and you can, you know, in a van with paintings and go to town to town, city to city and look for a pop-up space. In New York City, for example, there are tons of empty storefronts. Seems remarkable, right? It's, 
you know, the economy is booming in New York, but the storefronts are empty. Many of them, even along Fifth Avenue. It's really sort of shocking, but they're there. There's an organization called Shashama that puts artists in. It's a nonprofit space uh, that puts artists in. You have to apply, but in some storefronts in New York. But you could also go after the storefronts yourself, whether it's New York, Chicago, LA, Santa Fe, you know, uh, all over the states, all over the world. Um, so Gregory, I hope that's I hope that's helpful. You could um, you could go to a big city, travel there, and secure a pop up space, which just means you're telling a landlord who can't rent this this gallery, this this storefront space. I want to rent this for a month. I'll make it look good. I'll put a coat of paint on the walls. If you turn on the electricity um, and cover the insurance, or you can even get insurance. Insurance liability insurance for a space is is not much, like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. It's not very much. See if the expenses work, and then you can either do it yourself, or you can bring in other artists to do it with you. That 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 whose work really works with yours. Um, let's see, Michael um, says I have done the pop up show idea before, and I'm wondering if there's a strategy for getting art press to attend. Do these shows require a curator to legitimize them? They don't require a curator to legitimize them. A pop up show is what it is. Um, it's artists getting together collaboratively to do something. Inviting curators is a great thing to do, getting curators from local museums to come. And that's not as hard as you might think because it's a way for them to discover work. When a curator is urged to come to a gallery, there's less incentive for them to come to the gallery because they know that that gallery has a profit motive in getting a curator from, it, let's say, a museum or a nonprofit to come there. Whereas when an artist invites people directly from museums and other places to come, it's, it, 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 it gets more curiosity going because the artist wants to um, share something and it gives them a chance to discover that artist without there being a, the kind of commercial pressure that a gallery would put on a curator visiting, which is, you know, do you like this artist? Do you see them in a, another show kind of thing? So, so Michael, in terms of though getting press, again, attention for a pop-up show if you haven't gotten it in the past it could be things like having other entertainers events whatever i remember um there was a, a journalist that i interviewed just about this quite a while ago and i was asking her uh what drives you to events that artists send send things to and she said well she said really we're all busy right there's only so many events we can go to so which event do I want to go to? She said, the other day I got uh, an invite to an event at a cooperative gallery. And she said, normally I don't go to cooperative galleries, um, period. She said, I go to artist generated shows, I go to commercial galleries, but co-ops I usually don't go to. She said, but in this case, they said, you know, come this, this Friday night from, you know, six to nine, we'll be serving free ice cream, there'll be a juggler, there'll be a poet reading, there'll be a guitar player doing a performance, bring the kids, bring anybody you want. She said, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom, you know, I grabbed my kid who's seven years old and I went to the show. She said, that's what got me in there, the events, the excitement. I'm not just going to go there and watch the show um, or look around and leave. I know I can go there and my kid will be entertained and I could use a little ice cream and wine or whatever is there. So, so coming up with events is, is important and that helps drive traffic. And also, uh, again, Gregory, if there's more people in that show, like, like a dozen, then you're definitely going to get more traffic. One of the most successful things I've seen happen in New York, and this is such a kind of simple idea, but it was an open call to artists. Uh, they're looking for paintings, do a small painting or photograph, whatever you want, on a metro card. That's, that's about this big, right? Teeny little card, um, you know, that's used for getting into the subways. And they said, you know, submit your, your work. If it's accepted, we'll hang it up. So, you know, hundreds of people submitted, and they hung up hundreds of works. It was like salon style. Just the walls were jammed with these little teeny tiny paintings on metro cards. Everybody invited their friends. They gave them all, you know, an invitation. They said, please invite your friends. Um, the opening was so packed nobody could get in. And that's kind of what you want an opening to be like. The place was jam full of people. It was, they were spilling out onto the streets. And all because there was probably about 200 artists in that incredibly teeny space. And they all invited their friends. <laughs> you know? So that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, uh, 
Kathleen, best to invite curators by email, snail mail, or both to a nonprofit, or both, really. Um, email, snail mail. The best way to really do it, though, Kathleen, if you can, is call them up. Um, I often tell artists that, and you know, occasionally I get a call that says, Brainerd, I'd really like you to come to my show. It's happening tomorrow. It's in New York City. I know you're there. It's harder to say no when someone calls you up. It's more intimate. Um, I've done that with newspapers as well. Called them up and said, I, you know, I sent you a press release. I, I, don't, I don't know if you saw it, but I'd, I'd really love you to cover this show or whatever it is. And they often say, thanks for calling us and urging us. We appreciate that. We'll take a look at it. You know, so, so the intimacy of a call is huge. Email, snail mail, both, Kathleen. But a call is, 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 is the best of all. Um, yeah, Kip, that's great to hear. Kip had belly dancing friends performing at his uh, MFA opening, and, and um, it was a great collaboration. That can be great. And if, and if the general public know that there's going to be performers there and they're invited, it can be a great success. So, um, again, I want to thank you, members, for, for being part of this group, for being part of this tribe, for being supportive of each other. Um, love working with you guys. I'm here to answer questions. And, uh, of course, Julia Tolstrup's the editor in this, in this group that you, that you have with all the other resources that are here. And um, if you're watching this afterwards, you can still comment in a thread and... Um, and all of you who are watching this now can still comment in the thread and I'll get back to you afterwards. So I want to uh, thank you all for, um, I don't see any more questions right now, so I want to thank you all again. Lots of love to all of you, great success in your studios, and um, look forward as always to seeing you in the group and hearing about your work.